World of Warcraft Classic is known as a grindy game. However, there are some grinds in the game that are absolutely insane and probably take hundreds of hours to do. Whether they be rep grinds or grinds to get a certain item to drop from a boss, here are 5 insane grinds in Classic WoW that take forever. So starting off at number 5 on this list is the Timbermore Hold Rep. So any of you guys that are playing Classic WoW and you've gotten to the point where you need to go to Winterspring, you would have inevitably gone past the Timbermore Hold Tunnel and been attacked by a bunch of Furbolgs. Now some players may have made the mistake of actually attacking these and became more hated with this faction. In actuality, the Timberwall Hold faction is a very hard reputation to grind up. Most players were just trying to get on terms with the Timbermore Hold so that they can walk past the tunnel and not get attacked. However, the reputation with the Timbermore Hold can go way further than that, with even a really unique epic trinket that you can get when you get exalted. This is not like other reputation grinds in the game, because unlike other factions in Classic WoW, where you start off at neutral or friendly, you are beginning this reputation grind from being hostile. So you need to grind your way up to get to neutral. Aside from a handful of quests, there are only two ways to increase reputation with the Timbermore Hold. One is to kill Furbolgs of the Deadwood or Winterfall clans. Killing one of these Furbolgs gives you 5 reputation. The second way of grinding reputation with Timbermore is by handing in quest items that drop from these Furbolgs that give you 5 reputation each. The Deadwood Headdress Feather and the Winterfall Beads will give you 10 reputation each when you hand them in to an NPC in the Timbermore Hold. So you may think this doesn't sound that bad. You are getting reputation per kill and you are getting quest items to hand in that can give you further reputation. However, things are not as they seem. On the last leg of your journey to get to Exalted, the 5 reputation you get from killing one of these Furbolgs goes away meaning that the only repeatable and farmable way of increasing your reputation with the Timbermore Hold once you get to Revered is by handing in the quest items. So what people do when they try to grind this reputation is they basically save all of the feathers and beads that they get from these Furbolgs and hand them in when they get to Revered. But you just know that there's going to be some guys that never knew this and looked it up and reached Revered with the Timbermore Hold and realising the giant mistake they made by handing in these quest items too early. I'm pretty sure Blizzard designed this to be as punishing as possible. I mean, this is just a really cool joke played by Blizzard. But anyway, if you manage to do this and you get through all the hassle of killing approximately 10,000 Furbolgs, you get one of the coolest trinkets in the game. The trinket, Defender of Timbermore, lets you summon a Timbermore ancestor to fight and heal you. And this is as good as it sounds. The magic damage they do ranges from 230 to 330 damage and will heal you for 400 HP when your HP reaches below 50%. And this Furbolg ally lasts for 30 seconds, meaning this could be one of the best dueling trinkets in the game. But that's not the only cool thing that you get from the Timbermore hold. When you reach Ornit, that's when things start to get interesting. You get the 15 Agility Recipe for Enchanters, which is absolutely crucial and is basically just a license to print money if you're an Enchanter, due to how in demand this enchant is. As well as the Furbolg Medicine Pouch, which is a very unique offhand item that has been speculated to be pretty good for some classes in one-on-one -on -one duels. As crazy as it sounds, I'm actually trying to get Exalted with the Timbermore Hold just to get that amazing trinket. I think it would be pretty amazing to have that when you're in a raid or when you're trying to duel someone. And due to how few people actually want to grind this reputation, I think it would be a pretty unique thing for my character to have. Okay, so number 4 on this list is the Savage Gladiator Chain. Blackrock Depths is probably the biggest dungeon that Blizzard has ever created. I don't know why, but they basically created Blackrock Depths to be an entire zone in itself. There are so many variations of runs you can do to get into Blackrock Depths. One of the most popular variants that people group up for in Classic WoW is Arena Runs. So the reason why Arena Runs are so popular is because it doesn't take that long to complete. If you just rush to the arena and then reset the instance, it really won't take that long, perhaps about 15 minutes. And there's a wide variety of very cool drops that you can get from BRD arena runs, including the Savage Gladiator Chain. This amazing chest piece has amazing stats, most notably the 2% crit chance, which is just pretty much best in slot for a lot of classes at this stage of Classic WoW. 
To get the boss that drops this in itself is a challenge. So any hunter or warrior trying to get the Savage Gladiator chain is going to be subject to a lot of RNG. With each arena run, you only have a 1 in 6 chance of getting Garrosh the Dervish, which is the only boss that can drop this amazing item. But then after that, you only have a 9% chance of the Savage Gladiator chain actually dropping. So on paper, it doesn't sound that bad, but when you factor in that 1 in 6 chance of the boss actually being in that instance, it's going to take quite a lot of arena runs to get it. Number 3 on this list is the Winter Spring Frost Saber Mount. There are a lot of very hard to obtain and rare mounts in Classic WoW, however what is in contention to be the hardest mount to get in Classic WoW is the Winter Spring Frost Saber. Now this is an alliance only mount, meaning that there's no way for a whore to actually get it since they can't interact with the NPC that sells it in any way. So the Winter Spring Frost Saber Trainers is probably the smallest faction in World of Warcraft history. I'm pretty sure there's only two members on this faction, and one of them pretty much does nothing. The only relevant NPC is this Night Elf that is on top of the Frost Saber Rock, who doles out a bunch of quests that you can do. Now this is the definition of a grind, because it's not like there's any variety in the quests, or any easy way of increasing the rep with the Winter Spring Frost Saber, but the fact that you need to be exalted with this faction to get this amazing looking mount is kind of like a cruel joke. So how do you gain reputation with the Winter Spring Trainers? And yes, that is their official name, the most specific faction in World of Warcraft history. Well the answer to that is Kill Quests. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but when you factor in how little reputation you get from these quests, and that killing mobs individually don't give you any extra reputation like the Timblemore Hold, you have a very hard task in front of you. There are only 3 quests that you can do to increase reputation with this faction. The most common quests to do are the kill quests that require you to collect 5 Shartooth meat and 5 Chillwind meat. Another quest requires you to kill 10 Winterfall Furbolgs, and worst quest that you can do is going all the way to the bottom of the map to kill 8 Frostmall Giants, which are level 60 elite mobs by the way. So how much reputation do you get from completing these quests? Well for the regular kill quests, they give 50 reputation. For the elite giant quest, that gives you 75 reputation. So according to my calculation, if you want to get exalted with the Winter Spring Frost Saber trainers, you would need to do 840 kill quests or 750 quests by killing the giants. So just picture that in your mind. You have to go to the night elf to get the quest, ride your mount all the way down to the bottom part of winter spring, kill 8 level 60 elite giants, then take your mount and go back, hand the quest in and repeat that 749 times. Does that sound like fun to you? That being said, I have seen quite a few people actually try to attempt to increase their reputation with this faction. I mean, I kind of understand it because this is a very cool looking mount, it's just that I, I could never manage to do this. This is one of the most insane grinds and if you ever see anyone on this mount, you need to give them some respect for putting up with all of this. Okay, so number 2 on this list is Iron Foe. So the last grind on this list was absolutely disgusting, but this is not that bad. Rare drops in Classic WoW is quite a big part of the game. The RNG of what items a boss can give you is very important. Getting Sulphurus or Thunder Fury is basically an exercise in luck, but the lesser known item that can drop is called Iron Throw. Now this item has one of the most amazing procs in World of Warcraft history. It gives you a high chance of attacking 2 extra times upon attacking a target, and it's not even a low chance for a proc. This happens quite a lot. So needless to say, a lot of rogues and fury warriors would be foaming at the mouth at the prospect of getting this one-handed mace. The only problem is, it only has a 0.7% drop chance from the final boss in BRD. So you can pretty much always count on getting a melee DPS to do emperor runs in BRD. That being said, anyone trying to farm this epic one-handed mace will have to go into a BRD probably over a hundred times due to the extremely low drop chance from the final boss, which is unlike the Savage Gladiator Chain, which can be repeated every 15 minutes or so. This requires you to do a full run of BRD and get to the final boss, meaning that it's not easily repeatable. But this is so good, and I'm pretty sure is best in slot at this phase of Classic WoW, and will honestly last most players up until AQ40. 
That is how good this is for Fury Warriors. Okay, so number one on this list is rank 14. Anybody that has played Classic WoW well back in the day will know that this will of course have to be number one. This is definitely one of the most brutal grinds and is honestly a design flaw by Blizzard as they quickly changed this in the first expansion to something a lot more casually friendly. Now when I say casually friendly, I mean someone that actually has a job, because to get to rank 14 in Classic WoW makes it impossible to do anything else except play Classic WoW and go into Battlegrounds. Now how extreme is this? Well the mechanics of the rank system in Classic WoW is time sensitive. Now you can't just accumulate some kind of points in a system and buy items when you have enough points. The rank system basically decays your rank over time. Each week you need to go over a certain threshold to maintain your rank and with each PvP rank that you attain it's harder and harder to get to the next rank. The high ranks of the PvP system gives you some amazing armor and finally at rank 14 you get an amazing weapon, which is a status symbol in itself due to how hard it is to get. And when I say hard, I mean you would pretty much have to grind battlegrounds for 10 to 14 hours a day for several months. And that is not an exaggeration, you would literally need to do that and if you took any kind of break, your rank would diminish and decay pretty quickly, basically resetting all of your progress. So it was literally impossible to attain rank 14 in Classic WoW and maintain a job or an education. This is one of the most brutal systems that Blizzard has ever designed and have never tried to replicate this kind of system again. If you saw anyone in the High Warlord or Grand Marshal gear, you gave them respect because they were the hardcore of the hardcore. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. This is Volti, signing out.